Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm Sharad Kutin with me, uh, Baptist Coelho. He's uh, an artist from India. And he's here in uh, Malaysia uh, speaking to people who were involved in the uh, women's regiment of the Indian uh, National Army, something that uh, many of us who, who didn't live through th uh, the uh, Pacific War, uh, who don't have memories that go back that far, will even remember. But it was here, and I, I want to quote something from what you wrote, uh, Baptist, about the way you think about history and, and your artwork. He says, um, I think you say you, you work like an excavator. You say, I move back and forth in time, retrieving traces of the past and documenting the present across various geographies. My artworks probe beyond the surface to complicate it, counter and rethink oral histories, facts, memories, forgotten memories, language, random thought, invented stories, and strategically archived narratives. I'm, that sounds like a lot, but it really sets the stage for this, uh, this complicated story of artists engaging with history, because they're not engaging as historians, mm. they're engaging as artists. And I, I, want to help, I want you to help me understand, what is the distinction? Is your, do you see yourself as a historian, or do you see it as an archive? Well, what, what is it that's exactly going on with this kind of artistic research to work? Yeah, I sometimes call myself a bad historian. A bad historian, okay. Yeah, being very honest about it sometimes. But when I'm trying to say bad, I don't mean to say, uh, what I'm also trying to suggest is that history has been, you know, has been interpreted by so many various sources uh, from, from the side door person to a historian to I think everyone and everyone, especially in today's day and age with social media. I think it's, it's fascinating with, with the kind of people that I was trying to track. At times I had to look at a Facebook group and basically there are other people there actually sharing all that information and the archives is something that I would have tracked but then I would have not got through because of certain restrictions or institutional. What I'm going to say is that yes, I think every, I'm not anyone and everyone is a historian but I also like to sort of quote uh, Joseph Beuys, who's an, a German artist, and he said everyone is an artist, and I think, uh, not that everyone is a historian, but I know I'm, it's, a, it's a democratic space, but yeah, I think uh, when I work, I, uh, it was not a plan that I want to look at my material the way I do today. I think it's just out of curiosity. It's also a lack of my understanding of history. Let's put it like that. So how did you, how did you so was it serendipitous tripping over something that led you to the Jansi Rani regiment of the INA? Yeah. So it was in 2015 when I was in Singapore. I was doing a two-week trip, uh, a research trip. And I was looking at how conscription happens in Singapore. I was looking at conscription as an idea, also how it happens in various countries. That was part of my interest. And Singapore has a, a conscription system. And I was looking also looking at other countries like, say, Switzerland, Finland. And I was collecting material within that. Within those two weeks, I was basically something at the IHC, which is the Indian Heritage Center, and they have a display of the INA, and that's where I came came across the the Jasi Rani Regiment, and I thought, oh there was this massive contribution of, of women too. And uh, it's something which we all hear the INA, uh, but the Jasi Rani Regiment was not. And I thought, oh, that's, that's very fascinating. And I thought, because within my subject also of the Siachen Glacier, um, there has been a while that there was no presence of women, but there are now presence of women. And part of my research on this- Women as combatants. Uh, uh, in, in the Jasi Rani Regiment, right, yes, okay. yeah. So I was, I was curious to see, um, so within, I was this sort of need to sort of how to look at women also on the Siach and Glacier, if at all. I mean, I was trying to look at that. And then when I found this material of, I mean, this, this particular event, I thought, how fascinating to know that there were women involved. Because, you know, at the moment, with, 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 with situations in India, or countries like India, where women rights, et cetera, is quite compromised, et cetera. I thought, this is amazing as an example uh, that it already existed in World War II. And of course, Jhansi Rani, 1858, where she sort of was, you know, she fought the British. So I was trying to look at that and I said, how fascinating and I found out, found their stories a little bit I mean at that point just touched the tips and I thought it will be interesting to flesh this whole research out and that's when I said okay let's try and look into this into this but at the same time as an artist one is limited with resources and funding so I said how do I get to sort of do this particular research that's when the NTU uh, chance came and I got through that and that's when I said I could flesh this material out over there okay so I'm thinking about your work right so if uh, you are a bad historian uh, and which which means that you perhaps don't spend as much time on the archi in the archives as you should, yeah, or being very sarcastic yes, yes, story. I know, and you don't maybe <laughs> footnote everything and and do what historians might do. What what are the what are the narratives that you, or counter narratives to use your own words that you could possibly be kind of tapping into? 
to tell or retell the story of this particular women's regiment. I mean, are you responding to contemporary ideas mm -hmm. of the place of women? Are you or politics or the way men and women operate in a battlefield? Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to do? So, for example, with the Jasi Rani, it's very interesting. There has been some material out in terms of some books, and there has been some historians responding, and there has been some sort of material out there. At the same time, when I'm at, as an artist, I'm also very mindful very aware of the fact that how I don't want to follow on the breadcrumbs left by other historians. I think I want to also dig into think what can I really in this now contribute or find? And I think I also, and of course, every historian's book always wants to claim there's a gap of some stories. But that gap, I think, um, I don't know if, they have, if, if the gap can be filled or not. But I would also look at, how, can we just focus on the gap and say that there is a gap and just acknowledge the gap. And so as an artist, I'm also trying to, I would like to sort of just to bring focus to, a, to the gap. What the gap is, it will be difficult for me to fill. And I can't claim that because it will take me years. Because what I'm talking about, the gap is basically most of these women were, were illiterate. They didn't have any kind of stories. After, they, after the army, their regiment became defunct, they didn't have afterlives. Whereas you have some women who do have afterlives, whose lives have been documented. And we understand the regiment stories to them. But I'm also very curious about these other women who didn't have really any agency. And what are these stories? And I'm trying to basically look, locate this gap. And the idea is to basically see what this gap is and bring it to the forefront and say that this, this is a gap. And this gap, how do we deal with it? What, who writes history? Who gets a chance to talk about history? And what narratives are we basically listening to uh, when we look at history? So yeah. OK, so in the, the final minute, I mean, where is this work going to be? I mean, where is it going to be shown and, and when? Yeah, no answers for that, simply because the way I work, uh, I really don't know what I will end up doing, what, what sort of form it will take. Uh, that's again the big, 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 big pleasure of an artist and I keep that and I really protect that because of not having any kind of pressures from any kind of institutions or, or galleries or what have you. Uh, what form it will take, I don't know. There are places that are interested to show this work. We will see how that unfolds. But uh, at this point, it's really me diving into research and you know trying to collect as much of material as I can. And how do we follow your work? I mean, how do we follow this trajectory? long after this uh, episode airs. Mm. Is there a place where we can go and follow you? Yeah, I, I, I mean, you have a website, uh, baptist.com, baptistcoiler.com, or Instagram. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the only That's way. good enough. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Okay. Instagram is great. <laughs> yeah. okay. I mean, Instagram, yeah, just for posts. But I think the website, which I'm yet to sort of really update. But yeah, that should be the place to yeah, look at works. Yeah. Thank you so much but, for being with me. But I can't show. promise anything very quickly because it takes me years to manifest into something. Yeah. Take your time. Take your time. Thank you so much you. again for spending your time with us. Uh, I've been speaking to Baptist Quayle. He is an artist from India, currently at the Center of Contemporary Art and NTU in Singapore. That's all we have for Let's Talk uh, today. Uh, I'm Shirai Kutin, only for Astro Wani.